Welcome back to If I Knew You Better. I'm Brendan Davis, your host, and today's show is very special for lots of reasons, mostly because of the guest, of course, but also just a little bit because of how I'm going to release it. Today, my guest is Li Chen, and as you might reasonably guess from her last name, Li is from China originally. But although that is a relevant theme that runs throughout her story, China is not the focus of this show. I interviewed Lee back in Los Angeles for If I Knew You Better, but as I did two weeks ago with Raymond Ma's interview, I'm going to start cross-posting any episodes that have something of a China angle on my original podcast also, Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom. That show has built up a pretty nice following, and I want to make sure that as many people as possible hear some of these stories as I build the audience for this show as well. So now let me introduce you to our guest. Lee Chen is a very familiar face on US TV, but her own story is, to me, a lot more impressive and incredible than the many shows she's appeared in. For starters, Lee is probably the only successful Hollywood actor who got their start in a Chairman Mao thought propaganda performance troupe towards the end of the Cultural Revolution in China, back when she was a very little girl. She was born in Inner Mongolia, was a founding class member of the Johns Hopkins Chinese program at Nanjing University, then Lee moved to the U.S. for grad school where she earned two master's degrees, and she began this dual professional life as an academic and as an actor. She landed in Chicago for grad school originally, and she fell into studying acting at the famous Piven Theater Workshop, which was run by Byrne and Joyce Piven, who were also the parents of Jeremy Piven, who you probably know from Entourage in many films, as well as the director Shira Piven. Lee worked and studied for years in Chicago. She moved to Hawaii for a second master's, did kind of every theater production she could, and she finally moved to Hollywood. Now, as of today, Lee has built an eclectic film, TV, and theater career with roles ranging from the dramatic to the absurdly funny. But part of what's so incredible about Lee's story to me is that she worked quietly and diligently over a 20-year period to move her entire family, one by one, over to the U.S. from China. And she talks about how she did that. And that alone is worth listening to this interview. I was so amazed with her story. I was really lucky to get to meet Lee in the first place when she accepted a role in this short film that I produced back in Los Angeles earlier in the year. And when I heard Lee's incredible story, I knew that I had to get her on the mic to share it with you too. So as I mentioned up top, I am cross-posting this show both on If I Knew You Better and my original China-focused podcast, Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom. But no matter where you hear it, I hope you enjoy it. You can visit crazyinagoodway.com and track down the blog or resources page for photos, show notes, and more. But now, please enjoy my interview you with Lee Chen. Lee Chen, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you for having me here. I am very <laughs> excited to talk with you and you have an amazing story to the degree that I know it and we'll talk about how we know each other and all these other things but let's let's start at the beginning. How do you introduce yourself to people who you would like to know better? Uh, I would introduce myself uh, to be an actress and teacher and a mom. Nice, nice. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sure um, the kids appreciate that. <laughs> yes, and uh, try to be a good wife. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would just, you know, that's very simple, basic introduction for me. And somebody who is from China and mm-hmm. who have been in America for 30 years and uh, um, came to America for two master degrees, and then brought the whole family to America. This is part of why, again, I don't want to get ahead of my own story that I'm <laughs> telling in your story that we're uh-huh. relating, but as I learned these things about you, I just was blown away. So let's let's start back there at your roots. Where do you consider, where are your roots? Uh, from in the Mongolia of China. Mm-hmm. That's where I, grew, I was born, where I grew up. So I would, you know, consider myself um, somebody who is from Inner Mongolia, although I am Han Chinese. Right. And this is a distinction that, of course, I know since I live in China and have tons of Chinese friends and colleagues. But uh, people here in Inner Mongolia, if you, if you don't know China, people here in Inner Mongolia and they think, this is, oh, Mongolia, that's a piece of Mongolia. Uh, but no, it's, it's Chinese, it's like mainland China territory, but it's that. It's sort of like the border in a yes. way. It's sort of before the border. It's like right yes. there at the border area. Yes. And a lot of the well-known cities, there's Erdos, there's, again, my, pardon my pronunciation, a Ho Hat, or how do I say it? Hu He Hao Te. Hu He Hao Te. 
Uh, very nice, and that's why we collapse it if we're lazy English speakers. Yeah. But so you're that's the nearest uh, city to where you're from. You yes. said you're about a half hour. Yeah, half roughly. hour away from uh, Hua Hao Te. It's a little town called uh, Cha Shu Qi, uh, or we call it Tu Mo Te Zuo Qi. And I, see, I, I think I speak enough Chinese that I think I know what that means. What does that mean? Sort of? So that is actually uh, like Hua Hao Te is mm-hmm. means green city. Right. So. Actually, I. Don't oh, I'm, I'm totally embarrassing you. Are you a real? Are you? Are you a real Chinese person? No. no, you are. You actually. What, what is? What is your your given name? Your Chinese name? Uh, Li Hui. My last name is Li. That's my father's last right. name. Hui is given to me. It's like the collection of grass. So I think my okay. dad said, you know, wanted me to be like, you know, green grass to to be not noticed, but oh. to make the world beautiful. Ah, very nice, very nice. He's so he's setting you up to make a difference in the world, but don't. It's funny because there's the, especially from like, there's an idea of not standing out. Standing out too much can be bad. Yes. Because if you stand out too much, you yes. can be people pay too much attention, and yes. you can get in trouble. Yes. And so that's a definitely an old school, understandable mindset from that time and that place. Totally. So, I've got to find out. Let's you know. You are very nice, very sweet, and very modest, an extremely busy working actor. You're in so many shows. You've done so many things. People will put the links in for IMDb so people can look you up. But you have you know, you work seemingly all the time. You're in multiple shows with people I know, or have you've done multiple projects with people I know in my small world. And you were just nice enough to co-star in the short film that I produced here, my favorite season, which is how I got to know you. Yes, which is so cool. And I learned, among, among many other things, how you started. How did you get started in the performing arts back uh, in Inner Mongolia and China? And uh, how, did we, how did you get here today? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things, because my dad originally from Beijing, then he went to Inner Mongolia when he was actually in his teens. He decided to help the family and become an accountant. Mm-hmm. Went to Inner Mongolia, then he met my mom. Yin in the Mongolia, but my mom is also not from in the Mongolia. She's from Sichuan. Okay, so the so the whole the family is Han Chinese, but from, yes, from the both uh, my mom and dad are Han Chinese, but both my mom and dad like to sing and dance. Uh-huh. Uh So although they are not professional, but my dad is accountant. My mom works, you know, uh, in 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 his company. So my mom likes to dance. My dad did all kind of performance, like a kuai bar shu. You know, the mm-hmm. the every spring break, uh, spring festival, the company will have their staffs to do performances. My dad and my mom would, you know, be part of those. So I think that's the first influence mm-hmm. that I had. Then, then when I was four or five years old, I was chosen to be in a gymnastics team. Okay. So I started as a gymnastist, and then um, f- when I was six or seven, they think it's too hard for me. So I said, no no more doing tea chow, you know. Okay, they, they, they saw it phys- like physically yeah, yeah, difficult. They, they, the training yeah, is crazy. Yeah. I've known, I've got yeah. friends whose kids have done that. Yeah, but at that time, I started a school. So during that, the, there was the end, tail end of the uh, Cultural Revolution. So mm-hmm. we're still prison Chairman Mao. We're still prison communist. So I didn't get to do any of those uh, cultural revolution um, major severe thing, but yes, we yeah. got to form the uh, uh, Chairman Mao Thoughts Propaganda Troop, Mao Zedong Sixiang Xuan Chuan Dui. So I become one of the mem- member member of the school performing troop since I was a gymnastist before. So my dance ability shows up. Mm-hmm. So I started when I was six or seven years old to be part of the in the from our district, uh, the they choose from different schools uh, form this troop. So we perform all over the the region, and to praise Chairman Mao and communist, and that's how my start. So I got training <clears throat> to sing, to dance, mm-hmm. to perform at, in you know outdoor stage. For thousands of people, exactly. So that's how where I started, and then I keep performing even when the end of the Cultural Revolution. Mm-hmm. I was still doing performance, and when I was in 
middle school when that all uh, all stopped, but we still have this performing troupe. And uh, one point, I almost go to join the dance uh, school. Okay. I went to apply for that, but my parents said no. <laughs> yeah, were they? Were they? I mean, afraid you might be a be in for a life of hardship as an yes, answer. Yes, yes. Yeah. My dad said no. That's that's absolutely mm. no. <laughs> what, what, what was his, what was his idea that you might do uh, so, something like accounting or engineering yeah, or something practical yeah. like that? Or? I, I also because of, even then, you know, mostly we're just doing dancing, learning from the peasants, workers, right. soldiers. We go to you know. We learn how to shoot rifles. We go to mm. dig the dirt. We we go to the factory. The, those times, right. still that time, the academically, you know, it's not that focused. Right. However, my dad has lots of books, so I love to read. Even when I was little, even those books, forbidden books, he 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 hid. He managed to keep some yes. hidden away. So, you so I self taught myself to read the complex form too. Excellent. Because the chi- Chinese, you know. So you read the, com- the the traditional characters as yeah, well to simplify. Yes, right? I cannot write. So so, that so into the, and and I'll weigh in just for the sake of people who aren't kind of China files or don't know. Uh, you nowadays in mainland China you use the simplified mm-hmm. characters, but of course the classics in any old books. I mean, they're yes. all written in the the traditional, which are much more yes. much more complex yes. and hard to read, and you can't necessarily. It's a different. Mm-hmm. you know language mm-hmm. to read mm-hmm. that stuff and so that's a that's a big deal because part of the during the during the communist part of it was a simplified because uh-huh. they wanted to increase literacy yeah i mean there are lots we could you know a lot of negative things could focus on one of the positive aspects was the attempt to increase literacy yes. which meant simplifying the characters yes. so more people could more could easily understand it but yeah the downside is is that what well, well, it probably served the purpose in a lot of ways. Like the old books are no longer readable yes, by a lot yes, of people, but, yeah, but some yeah. keep, people kept, it, kept yeah. it alive to be able to do that. Yeah. I think that really helped me a lot in terms later when the whole uh, country went back to the normal, the educational system mm-hmm, went back right. to normal. At that time, I was in, I started high school. So then <clears throat> even during the, the, that whole time, I, I was always number one in my class. Wow. So, awesome. uh, yeah, academically is always uh-huh. so my dad, because my dad is very focused on ac- academics. He sounds he sounds like the dads I know now in Beijing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Making sure the kids yeah. are, are have the best manage. Yeah. So in high school, uh, was when I started when I was fifteen, for whatever reason, in our little town, in my little uh, school, no um, English teacher. But at that time, uh, people started to, you know, um, know that the foreign, if you go, you want to go to college, you have to have a foreign language mm-hmm, or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, but uh, at that time, I think I found a radio station, learning English radio station. Oh. So I was 15. I, I stayed with my grandma. Grandma wakes me up every day at five o'clock. I listen to the learning English radio. Mm-hmm. So I self-taught myself. Wow. So then when my when I was 17 when the time come to uh take that 3 day national yeah, higher the, entrance the exam Gaokao. yeah Gaokao, I was able to be one of the only in my high school uh went to a foreign you know because the, you had the English yeah so I actually were... went to the English major in the <sighs> 重点大学 Mm-hmm. And then I, because we divided into the science major and the literature mm-hmm. major, mm-hmm. of course I want to go into the English as so I was in the literature major. So, so from our 300 high school graduate, only three went to college. I was the number one. Wow. And the next two boys, they had like 20 points farther down than me. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> so I, and I went to the English major in the Mongolia University. And let me also, just for the sake, I mean, this is my understanding of this. You tell me if I'm wrong, but I mean, I think, I think this is accurate. Um, I know it's accurate now, like, but, but it's hard to understand from a Western point of view. And it was hard for me to learn it. Now I've, I've learned it from people because of doing the show, how mm-hmm. it works and other things. But yeah, like here in the States, I mean, you can kind you know, you can pick and choose your major, your college. I mean, you may not get into a certain college or a certain degree program, but there's some other school that's got that major probably, and you can go, okay, it's not Harvard, but it's this, or it's not this top state school, but it's a smaller school. 
But in China, it's really proscribed. It's really prohibited unless you hit certain criteria. Yes. So you can't just say, well, I want to learn English in college and I want to go here. It's like, well, but what are your grades? Yeah. What have you done? So, what have you done so far? Yes. But you, you the, the, the tracking of people, like the... the it, I don't mean tracking like putting a chip in you, although that's coming. We all have one in our pocket already. <laughs> but the tracking of people in terms of your your path is this. Your life path yes. is this. That yeah. starts before people even... In some cases, that starts before people are like potty trained for the Yeah, it's we had crazy. not much choices. We had, you know, the freedom here in terms of, you know, you have your own opportunities. You decide you don't want to go to college. You go to two-year right. and you transfer to... And you can always you can find work way. your way in. Yes, you can, but in yeah. China, I don't know. I lived there for almost thirty years, sure. right? But at that time, that three day higher entrance exam is all of us to put our, you know, that's your life. Yeah, everybody still. Yeah, the Yaokao is still the college yeah. entrance, yeah. the college aptitude exam yeah. from for, high school. It it still yeah. runs for, everybody's life. For basically. me, those two years, I. I have my plans, like minute by minute, yeah. study English, yeah. study yeah. math, yeah. and I also keep telling myself, yeah, don't pass the exam, I'll kill myself, oh, yeah. literally. Probably felt that the way. The pressure, pressure oh, sure. of it, because sure. it's just, many, many kids did, you know, but yeah. I just, that, that was because I knew I would get into one of those Colleges, if it's not the Zhongdian major university, at least you know yeah. the regular college I could. So I knew because, uh, but my record, like you exactly. said, exactly you, yes, you worked uh, hard, always you... number one, always number one. So I, I knew that I would be there. But uh, going to English major was my oh was my first choice, right? And so <clears throat> you did that. Where where did you kind of go from there? I want let's let's go kind of linear for yeah. now because your story is. So good. Yeah. Really. Let's so just, let's I, just keep that, going. when I went to college, I basically stopped acting. So okay. That, that's it. Four to to year, focus on the yeah, four or... year of college. And then right afterwards, you know, we um, we graduate. Not like here, you need a PhD to teach in college. Yeah. For there at that time. So I graduated in July, then in September, I started teaching the college. Hmm. So I taught English in college for two years. Then I went to a uh, program Johns Hopkins University had a combined in, program in Nanjing. Yes, I was the first year founding member. What? Okay, so a little shout out to my friend Jonathan Garrison. You'll see his name tonight. Our screening of our film is tonight as we oh. record this. Jonathan Garrison is our lead executive producer, one of my best friends back in American, back in China. He went to the program at Nanjing, the Hopkins program. I want to say, Jonathan, sorry if I... 92 maybe he Oh went. my God. I but am. Yeah. He's a shi jie. That's awesome. I'm That's the so funny. 86, the founding so member. Funny. One of the founding first year. And I know... I, and I know his program, and he's a, he's a nice, sweet, modest guy. He's really humble about his crazy accomplishments and his big old brain. He wrote his own program in Chinese, like for the teacher, like to approve, like his his course of study. He he co-created with the professor, and he wrote his study program in Chinese. It's like, oh my gosh! Okay. <laughs> so me trying to remember just my basic chit chat when you oh when you got gosh. here, and where I'm trying to chit chat Chinese, and I've already like lost my basic like DD Chinese, and I'm doomed. That, <laughs> I'm that doomed. would be really <laughs> never do that. Oh gosh! If he's there. He probably would see the pictures that because you we are the there. yeah totally. And I'll have to. Well, he'll hear. I'll talk to. I'll talk to him later <laughs> today. Actually, that's so funny. Generally, I, you know, right after that, that part of the my personal life, I generally skip it. No one knows that, and I'm like, oh, I got a whole story <laughs> no, no, about that. No, the the going to Johns Hopkins program, of course, is great, but yeah. from that also. Hmm. Uh, turning point because from there I came to America. Well, well yeah, <laughs> well, tell, well, it's your story. Lee. This is your interview. Despite my yeah. interjections, this is your, yeah, your so, interview. So yeah. then, from the Johns Hopkins, uh, I did a one year program. I finished my program. I think now they have master degrees. At that time, when I first started, it just a graduate certificate. Mm -hmm. So the American students learns Chinese right. history, cultural Amer Chinese students learn American culture and society. Very cool. So I was one of that That's then amazing. from there I came to America. I went to New Mexico State Uni University, got my um, master's in education. 
Okay. Then I went to Chicago to teach. While I was in Chicago, I looked at the newspaper and then I saw an ad says, "Oh, we're looking for a Chinese actress who can speak Chinese." Just like that, I, yeah. I was like, "Oh, huh. I called." Here I am. <laughs> I went there and and that was like I came eighty eight. That was like a nineteen ninety, eighty nine. Yeah, eighty eight, eighty nine, eighty ninety. Okay. I was in Chicago, so I I went to you know audition, and she said, uh, "Do you have a monologue?" I was like, "What is a monologue?" <laughs> You're pretty new, yeah. Yeah. So for she, this Western yeah, style, she said, of "Can you can you perform something for us in Chinese?" I said, "Sure." Oh. I the one that I improvised. Then she, Did you do one of the old propaganda numbers? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Because they wouldn't have known what it is, right? Like she said, okay, so then then I got cast. It was a it was the primary English class that that play it was playing an old Chinese lady. Everybody, you know, from learning, you know, English as English teacher, you know, okay. French guy, okay. you know, German guy, uh -huh. Japanese woman, okay, and. Chinese old lady, so I got to play the old. Oh, they but at that time, I still had my nails so long. All kind of it was it was funny the story because I didn't yeah. want to play old woman. Yeah, you're, you're right? I was twenty your, something. Your 20s, right? right. Um, anyway, so that was my first uh, stage in okay. America, and then the director said, "I generally, you know, when we do this part of the things, we start with no pay." But I got paid five hundred dollars for doing that show, so she oh, said, "You're a professional." Wow, I was like, "Oh, that's I wasn't sure." That's exciting. Yeah. yeah then yeah. the next show. That's really validating to yes. know that oh, I can do this. Then okay. the next show, because I was a dancer, so right away I went to Chicago. I took dance classes. I pick up just for my own sure, benefit. Sure. And then next show, it was some uh, theater was doing. Um, Jiang Qing, you know, Chairman Mao's wife. Right, right, right. So it's a one woman show, but then, then, then they were auditioning the uh, things, and they said they need a dancer or something. So somebody brought me in. So I had no idea, no clue. I just, I, they hired an a Italian American actress to play Jiang Qing. What? So, yeah. Okay. They, so the controversy, can you imagine controversy? Can, so they, today it would be yeah, like that's front 20, page news yeah. in the, in no, that's the 90, entertainment business. That's 90, okay. right after that show. Yeah. So, um, but so the, he used me to open the show with a dance. Right. Used me in the middle, did the revolutionary dance. Uh -huh. Now used me as the uh, Jiang Qing when he was young, when she was young, oh, she was okay. an actress. Or a, so used me actually diffused a little bit controversy, okay. but still she she did the whole show. Yeah. That was the one big thing because I got exposed to the whole like Chicago and, theater yeah. is, is, is legit. I mean that's like real. Oh yeah, yeah. Real, I, real theater. I, I'm scene. just yeah. having yeah. fun, right? I I had no clue of all the. It's actually, it's actually a big deal if you're 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 you're, you're, you're right co-starring in a, China, yeah. a theatrical show in China yeah. in uh, Chicago. It's a pretty yeah. big deal. So that was the one of the thing right away. The agent or whatever uh -huh. coming up. Pro Is that how they found you? Was that really that, your first yeah. kind of your, your, your lucky big, break? Was, yeah, was that was getting it. in this show. Yeah, then but I did this. after that just like. A, Book a show, uh, one yeah. show after another. Right, just right. Uh, uh, just. Uh, um, Basically, just go to audition. Any you know, this, eventually some newspaper report me said why, you know, there's an Asian American actresses they don't get the role. Why you? I said well because I am from China. Yeah. I am you know if they want to find somebody and I can't speak English, I guess that's another thing. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so I did a during that five years. I think I did lots of uh, stage. Okay. Uh, I did the. Uh, you know the commercials, mm -hmm. all those things, mm -hmm. and but mainly stage. Then I decided after five years, and it's okay. I don't, you tell us the version you want to. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. She's totally this, she's this, she's, 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 I can, I can tell you're deciding. Yeah, some you personal go. Sure, things sure, happened sure, to sure, me sure. that triggered sure. me that. Uh, at that time, I also feel like if I really want to keep going as an mm -hmm. actor, so the the director who. Cast me in the first show. 
later she she's very supportive. Uh-huh. I'm the woman the who played the Chairman Mao's wife Jiang Qing. We became friends. We spent four months together. She yeah. also encouraged me. She at that time I didn't even want. I just wanted to have fun. I was teaching, right? Okay, right, right, right. So she said, you know, there's not many Asian uh, American actors, and they're not really. I mean, strong yeah, and good sure, ones. Sure. She told me keep going. So those are two people played a very important part in my acting career in China, in, in America. Mm-hmm. So Karen is the first one who cast me in mm-hmm. that. And later she was joking. She said, she and her husband said, "Oh, we we've created a monster." <laughs> <laughs> later, you got you started. You never stopped. Yeah. yeah. So Catherine was the one who later she passed away. So it was really sad story. Catherine, who was played the the Italian American, yeah, actress. yeah, she mm-hmm. had a, a, a brain aneurysm. So oh, she was only thirty one. Oh, After terrible. I met her for four wow. years, so so thank you, Catherine. Oh. If she can see me now, oh, be very, she'd be very very proud of her friends. Yeah, yeah. No so so she was. Mm-hmm. In, after that, in every production I was in, she would come to oh, watch me. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So anyway, so after five years, because of a personal, um, uh, like some life change stuff, life changing yeah. happened. Then I decided either come to LA, I need to move to LA, um, uh, or do something else. So at that time, I went to apply for American Airlines. I got picked by American Airlines. I applied for several schools, and then. I got accepted by University of Hawaii, oh. their Asian performance program, and wow. uh, they also offer me a teaching assistant. That sounds pretty great. So <laughs> then I decided to go to Hawaii, and then even American Airlines said, "Are you sure? Is that really you? Didn't want to?" <laughs> where, where were you a flight attendant, or were you flight attendant? Oh. I was applying for. Because in oh. the China, you know, Kung Zhou is yeah. one of the. Yeah, it's a it's a great. You want to get out. You want to see the world. That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah but a, at that time, one friend said, "You know, your flight attendant is just like a waiter." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not gonna have the time to do. Yeah, that's not a job. That that that's a job that for certain lives or yes. certain kind of business you're building, you could also do that. But yeah, if you're trying to be an actor or yeah. go to college, it's not gonna work. Yeah, you know, at that time. Place. Like I was, I also have motion sickness. So anyway, oh, yeah, so, so I decided to go to University of Hawaii for my MFA. So I was there for three years. That three years, I did every major production. I I did uh, Beijing Opera. I trained okay. for Beijing Opera for six months. Balinese key check six months. The Japanese style six months. Uh, so I did every major productions there, mm. and uh, also taught. So after that. I came to LA. I'm like, yeah, I got my <laughs> master degrees. I'm ready. So I came here for uh, for two two years. Oh, backtrack a little bit to uh-huh, Chicago. Uh-huh. So when I started to decided to become an actor, mm-hmm. I of course have to study. So I started with the Piven at the yeah. Piven's workshop theater. So I started with the Jeremy Piven's mom and dad. Right. And, and, Joyce and Burn Piven. And what's the name of that theater that they have or their school that they have? Yeah. Uh, Piven Theater Workshop. Right. And, and so for people who, if you know Jeremy Piven from, you know, he's done lots of film and TV besides Entourage, but if you know him as Ari Gold from Entourage, yeah. it, you know, he's from this, his his parents were these leading yes. Chicago theater people. Yeah. He grew up in that. Yeah. And and so, yeah, their theater yeah. Has, has been an incubator for a lot of really great yeah. talent. Yeah, they trained like John Cusacks, John, John Cusacks, Cusack, right. and I did shows with the uh, with the uh, Anne Cusack, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. John would come to watch our shows. Yeah. I actually at that time have had a connection with them. They trained a bunch of uh, really, you know, superb actors. Sure. Did, yeah. did Tim Robbins go through that program? Uh, know, not know, Tim I... Robbins' sister, and they're also connected. Oh, okay. I did a show with Adele Robbins. Right. So yeah, also all connected in a way. So I remember I, I trained with them and they gave me standing scholarship. They just wow. anytime just come on in. <laughs> but wow. I wasn't sure at the time I did I stopped, I went to teach and yeah. I remember Joyce at that time told me, you know, she said you have acting in your blood. You will be back. <laughs> I always remember she told that's me that's pretty pretty great to be able to yeah, plant that seed that's yes. gonna keep you. Uh, also, motivated. yeah, um uh Burn Piven, she played he played a very important part. He wrote the recommendation letter for me when I 
apply for the to go to Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii. Wow. So, uh, so the um, my uh, advisor, uh, he and Jeremy, uh, no, Burn Pivot used to be. Branch out from the second city, so oh, yeah. <laughs> there's lots of connections. It, Doesn't it. mean you know, but sure. it just uh, but it means but it means it, it means that they that they give you a, a fair shake. They look yes, at they they, make, yeah. they definitely consider you. They definitely oh uh, yeah. It. He yeah. he is a you know Burn Piven is a powerful figure yeah. in the theater world. You know, and and, and, and and if you're not good, they're not going to do that. Yes, yes. So yeah, sometimes people go, oh, that's a, okay. Yeah. Is yeah. Yes. This is you get that opportunity if all the other things are there too. Yes. Yes. So that's yeah. Great. I was one of the good teachers. Good teachers there for that. Yeah. Right. That, uh, right. Three years there too. So that was a very important part of my life in yeah. training there. And then, of course, then came here. I said, oh, "I'm ready." Uh, uh, that while I was in Chicago during those years, I I was already joined the union. Uh-huh. You know, SAG after right. I remember at that time. But then when I we do school stop, so I just you know the sec after you can make it inactive. So right, right. So, so you kind of went was, on sort yeah. of standby mode. Yeah. So now when I came back, I said, "Yeah, I'm ready." So I came. <clears throat> I went to you know get my friends, you know, and sex. So I you know I started to 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 learn the whole Hollywood thing, but I got pulled back like that because it was overwhelming. You okay. know, coming to Hollywood, right? Yeah. I did all the mostly stage. And then I got scared in a sense. Okay. So I would say that two years I did, you know, some things just on the side, but just couldn't feel like fit in. What? What? Why? Okay. So let's let's drill down into that a little mm. bit because that's that's going to be interesting. What? Mm. What scared you? Do you think? You think I, I think as a young, I mean, also I'm Asian, right? right. First, you don't have. A, at that time, still don't have 1998, right? Yeah, so, it's not, not as common. Yeah, not you don't like have a lot of references for your career. No. Out there that you can look at. Not like that. And I also just, uh, just uh, right away, um, I felt uh, um, uh, the other stories, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, that uh, and uh, it feels like a lost right yeah. away. Yeah. And I have agent right away to represent me, but uh, just, uh, just uh, the whole thing that that I started. Then I went to these parties uh, and see. Um, you know, Anne was the one that. Also, I was with Adele, Adele Robbins, uh-huh, and uh-huh. Anne Cusack. You know, I have a good connection. Yeah, these are people, and they're and they're welcomed in, and they yeah. they, they, they can be comfortable because they, yeah, they're in the was, business and their yes, families are in the yes. business. And... However, I felt. Uh, uh, overwhelmed and yeah. scared, and to see this whole, mm-hmm. even at the party, to just to see how this whole Hollywood thing. Right. So I guess at that time I pulled back a little bit, and at the same time I came here. I brought my parents. I immigrated my parents here. And this is a whole other storyline. You, I love the way you're telling your stories. You tell it how you want to. Um, I. One of my questions uh, has to do, I mean, I have questions about like, what's your biggest public or professional achievement and most meaningful, but also what, what are your most personally meaningful achievements? I'm guessing it has to do with you bringing your family over. Yeah, the which whole is family. Unbelievable. What During you know. 20 years time, I didn't use, you know, lawyer, whatever, all by myself and went through the legal legal status i become a citizen first and then i applied my for my mom and dad i applied for my brother i applied for my sister and the last the 2016 my sister's daughter-in-law was the last one that i helped i just go to i just applied uh-huh. for the yeah. so my mom and dad waited for two years mm-hmm. my brother waited for 12 years my sister waited for six years uh, my sister's daughter-in-law for two years because she's married, mm-hmm. you know. That's, mm-hmm. So the whole family is here. You got, that's so unbelievable. I, this, I, still, as you, you tell me, <laughs> you, you've got, that has to be incredible. Do you, do you, do you happen to live near each other? Yes, so, right now, right now, uh, my mom just passed away two years ago, mm-hmm. but my mom's came here for 22 years. Wow. My dad just, because he, she stayed, when they visited me, my dad, mom stayed, my dad went back. 
Okay. So my mom, mom really wanted to be here. Okay. So of course, then um, after two years, my dad. If at that time the visa is two years. Okay. Right now it's six months. If you got approved, you have to come. Okay. Otherwise, you lose lose it by that yeah. time. So my mom said, "If you don't come, you're not according to American law. We're divorced because <laughs> they oh. said you don't live yeah. together." Yeah, so. yeah. So my dad said, "I don't want to be there. I cannot talk, speak, go. You oh, know, I'm like yeah. a blind." You know, yeah, yeah, so, sure. But uh, it's how I feel in China. Yeah, only, yeah, only, yeah. Only, only now I have an iPhone. <laughs> so when I first brought them all so. here, I was the last year of my grad school.、Mm-hmm. So we, I had my mom and dad in Hawaii. Wow. So I was actually going to teach in Hawaii. Then I came to California, Los Angeles to visit friend. Visit friend for two weeks. During the visitation, there was audition for a play. I went to. Audition. I got cast for the play. Now I decided. Okay, now I'm gonna move to LA. <laughs> I stayed. I told my mom and dad to clear my stuff within two months. I'm coming back to move you here. Wow! And so they came to LA. Yes. And then, now, did your dad end up staying here?、Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Oh, okay, yeah, okay, the okay. whole family. My mom, mom he, he and dad. He was at first. He was. Yes. So yes. now, so now, yeah, he's he... okay. Because then my friend told me, if you want your mom and dad to feel comfortable, stay in Alhambra or Montreal. Saying, saying, you're, you're out. You're outside、yes. San Gabriel area, which、yes. people don't know. LA.、Yes. That's the、yes. the the biggest Chinese diaspora in the world. Is is east? It's not East LA. That's different. That's a different diaspora. <laughs>、um, but but east of Los Angeles, the San Gabriel Valley area, all these cities: Alhambra, Rosemead, Monterey Park, Arcadia, and it's the biggest group of Chinese people who aren't in China. Yes,、um, in the U.S. Yes.、Yeah. So I, I find yeah, yeah, I find apartment in Monterey Park. And uh, uh, Monterey Park is like China. Yeah, you can. It's totally. You can get in the middle、Everything. of the intersection, and you can spin up three hundred sixty degrees. And unless you look at the California license plates on the cars, other than that, you could swear you're in like Tongzhou. Yeah, <laughs> you swear you're like the suburb of Beijing. All the you know? signs is yeah. in Chinese, yeah. so that helped because my mom and dad right away felt at、yeah. home, and、yeah. they're very resourceful. You know, like first, the second day when I moved them here, they went to take the bus by themselves. Wow! So my mom and dad is very adventurous, so also very supportive. That's very really supportive. awesome.、Yeah. So that my mom and dad here, then I brought my. Waited for another six or how many years? My brother waited for twelve years since nineteen ninety four, right? Nineteen ninety four. I applied for the twelve years later, year two thousand six. It took twelve years to get him approved. Yes. Not not for him to decide. No. Because he decided I, yes to do it. We applied nineteen ninety four. Waited for twelve years because the they they have four categories for immigration. Okay. Okay. The people who married husband wife is、right. the first category、mm-hmm. fast. Yeah, then the, 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 the yeah, the, pa- together, yeah, yeah. the parents apply for uh, uh, the child the the kids under eighteen.、Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where the pa- the not married then the fourth category is the siblings. That's the、Got、last. It,、so. I think now probably that they without this immigration change. Yeah, I, think yeah, now, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just I just get sad whenever I think about yes anything, anything political. Yes. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Yeah. So, so in terms of professional achievement, I mean, again, I'll put your link in. I won't embarrass you. <laughs> yeah, I can see you're like,、oh, I don't want to talk too much about that. But, but what, are, what, what do people? What, what do you consider? I mean, I we we've already tracked some of these. You've had like this these series of at the time they were big breaks.、Mm-hmm. What, what do, you, what was, what's sort of your maybe your biggest professional in your mind, your biggest achievement? Professionally, or the thing you're proudest of, it doesn't have to be the thing that like is、yeah. the biggest project or whatever. I, I, What's the thing that you're sort of like the nearest and dearest to you? Yeah, to you? the the biggest one still close to me is my one woman show. Yeah,、uh, that was when I was in grad school.、Um, Even when I was in Chicago, when I doing theaters, some of the friends said, "You have a story. You got to tell your the story." So I told them, you know, when the time is right, I will do my story. That was one of the like people have their goals,、exactly. you know. So when I went to Hawaii, then one of my friends who her her major is directing,、mm-hmm. I went for acting. 
So she knew I have a story. So approached me. It's her directing project. It's my story. Fantastic. She direct. We wrote. Uh, so she. We, yeah, we you meet together. Her. Yeah, we yeah. work. It's my story. She helped me. She grew up. She was like a dramaturg, but you're yeah. the writer. Your story. I write, yeah. and uh, she directed. Mm-hmm. I wrote mm-hmm. and performed. Mm-hmm. So we had that uh, for first one. So then, it's a two woman project and one woman show. Yeah, yeah, it was it was really good. And then we she applied for grants. We actually got a grant to uh-huh. tour. Uh-huh. So then we made it even more. You know, from the the first one to so she it was really you know there's lots of stories about just the growing up and coming to sure, America because sure. I'm a dancer. So we put the dance in there. And she's a really good director. So. We had like big reports from the the newspaper uh-huh. from Hawaii, and then we toured in Hawaii and Los Angeles for a whole year. Wow. So all the libraries, you know, um, I, I then you know, so that was one of my big things, still close to my yeah. heart in a yeah. way, is because it's a it, it's like a therapy in a way to well, help me. Well, and and. I could I know we would not do justice for me to ask you to summarize it, mm. but what was the sh- what is the show basically like? What are the major beats of this of the show? Uh, the uh, uh, of the one woman show, yeah. yeah. Like what's the what's, part, sort of the, what's the framework? Is it your story pretty much, yeah, or is it, it totally my story? So you kind of laid it out a little bit here now. Yes, yeah. it's the story about uh, doing Chairman Ma's propaganda performing yeah. troop. Everybody yeah. said Cultural Revolution is horrible. What it, it's a it's a story, but to me, I was eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I just had a great time. I'm were... singing, dancing, and praise Chairman Ma <laughs> and. Uh, I just had a great. I didn't have to go to school to study. You know, which kid wouldn't be happy? You were lucky enough to be t- t- age wise, <laughs> and the, the historical timing and your age were those two magic factors where you it didn't go on for ten more years. No. You weren't old enough to oh well, you can hold a gun. And, yeah. yeah, you know, you, yeah. you didn't have to deal with it with yeah. the, with the the, 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 the trickier parts of it. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's really fortunate. Yeah, so that yeah. part, and then coming to America and uh, to do the, you know, cross and to do the the whole acting thing that's mm-hmm. bring me out and then the bring the family here. Yeah. So in my story is the whole thing about the bring the family here. The okay. My dad, you know. Yeah. So that was the then then looking forward to the future. The ending of the show was the me with the map. Okay. Uh, back to the Mongolian dress. That's where I grew up. Right. And right, now right. with the Li Bai, you know, mm-hmm. the poet, Chuang Jian Ming Yue Guang, Yi Shi Di Shen. Ending with the, the Tang Dynasty, the poet's poet. At that time, still missing home. Still oh. go how home does, still. How does, what's, how's a little bit of that go? Yeah. Where is my route, you know, from China to America? Uh-huh. Although I'm doing what I want, but yeah. where's my home? What if you... If put you on the spot in Chinese because uh, the poet poetic even you don't understand that people like to hear like uh, what's can you a few lines of that in Chinese? Uh, 床前明月光, 一世地上霜, 举头望明月, 低头思故乡. That's very, that's very, uh. Evocative. I, my my heart's got like a little skip there. Yes. What did you and, and you basically were saying? Is uh, is the the poet by Li Bai? Mm-hmm. It said uh, uh, before the bed, uh, the the bright Chongqing Mingyue bright the moon shines. Uh, you think it's the frost on the ground. You lift your head, look at the bright moon. Yeah. You lower your head. You miss your hometown. Oh, very nice. How have you approached? dealing with challenges, adversity. I mean, you have done so many things and, you know, the, the this is not an easy business. It's not an easy career. Even when you're getting good breaks and when you're, when you were, you started where, where there weren't as you didn't have as many people. Yes. So you were able to really be seen, but especially nowadays, there is a lot of, there are, you have a lot of, I mean, you're known, but there are a, a lot of other Actors, actresses who are mm. sort of in your category in Los Angeles. Yes. How do you deal with just you know challenges and overcoming this stuff and like dealing with 
12 years to get people like bringing your family. <laughs> that's like a massive thing to deal with. And it'd be easy to be discouraged by that. Yeah. I, I think for me is uh, the main thing is that if I, I think this is what I want to do, I keep, I, I'm persistent. I don't uh, let it uh, um, any difficult to stop me. And also one of the things is uh, I'm kind of a person that uh, I don't, um, think too much where you know this is what if i have a difficulty if i meet if i run into some difficulties uh, i would think about it's really bad situ situation mm -hmm. but i would it's what 100 percent, 98 percent is really bad but there are two percent is good i hold on that two percent that's one of the things and i don't let the outside affect me uh i just uh, you know, I, I keep my um, right thing to do. You know, I don't hurt people. I don't, mm -hmm. but I just, uh, then, then I like to help people. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think that's one of the things that also, another big thing is for me, because I came here for the first two years, then because I, I didn't feel like, a, I felt over, overwhelmed when I saw those, especially in the party with like uh, Anne Cusack, jo John Cusack, when I see them, I felt like so small, mm. right? Because you already know they're very famous. Right. I find I pull myself back. Then within two years, I then par my parents is here. At that time, my mama wants me to get married again or, you know, have children. Right, I love right. children. That's another thing. Uh -huh. So that, that I decided, I said, okay, then um, I still doing stage. I also, the last big thing, I'm still doing my one woman show around. The last big thing is I went to be a uh, MC and a translator for this Kunji group from China. Okay. So I tour with them for two months huh. as they are, you know, so during that touring time, I dis I told my mom and dad, I said, okay, uh, that's it. Because they said acting, my mom doesn't want to be an actor. No way. <laughs> my dad is, as long as I'm happy. Yeah. Right? But my mom, no, you you are not an actor. You cannot be an actor. When I was in Chicago, they came to see me the show, the show that the Jeremy yeah. Piven's mom and sister yeah. directed. Yeah. Newspaper, they even say, oh, Li Chen's parents fly from China, you know, for yeah, right, 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 right. My mom said, what are you doing there? <laughs> she even looked for a job for me. She found me a travel agent job for me. <laughs> I even listened to her when they worked for two two months. Wow. I just... Wow. <laughs> You really, yeah, filial piety is this concept yeah, that yes. people are aware of. It's, it's a real thing with uh, Chinese yeah. parents. So if you're listening to this and you're not Chinese, but you have Chinese friends and sometimes they tell you stuff that they're dealing with with the parents, it's 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 pretty legit. It's, yes. This stuff is deeply rooted even if you're grown up and it just kind of never goes away. Yeah, so at that time I said, okay, I go to find a teaching job because I have a a bachelor degree in English language. I have the Johns Hopkins degree. I have a master degree uh, in education. I have an MFA. You're pretty qualified. <laughs> pretty overall qualified. So so then then I said okay now after that uh, uh, um, traveling with the troop, their last stop is in Hawaii. That was also the time I said okay I'm ready to settle down. Mm -hmm. No more acting or whatever. Okay. A month later, I met my husband. Ah, okay. Because I was ready. So I met him on April 1st, engaged June 10th, got married October 15th. Next year, I had our first son. Amazing. I'm, I'm out of, I was out of acting. That's it. Okay. So and I... You, did you meet him in Hawaii, but he's not from Hawaii? Was he vacationing? And, uh, we went to uh, a friend's wedding. Okay. My best friend wedding. He was one of the. He was part of the wedding party. Uh, best or, man. Yes. I was one of the bridesmaids. We oh. stood next to each other. Oh, and that's how funny. it. Wow. So, that's, that's amazing. Story. That's amazing. So then I had my children. Then my dad came here. He went to learning English. Mm. So my dad said, "In China, you taught English. Why don't you teach, teach English here?" Yeah. So I went to apply for the job. Of course, I got the job. Sure. So I had my baby. I got my job, and ten years. Teaching, raising my two boys. Okay. So 10-year um, break from acting. Yeah. So, no, no, no theater, no, no nothing. No, nothing. Okay. Uh, basically, no commercials, no, no nothing. Look um, at this dish soap. No, 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 no that. Okay. No, just uh, because I decided I'm now I'm going to raise Focus my Focus on the family. Yeah. Huh? So, but my husband, oh, at that time also because he lost his job. 
Oh. I think if he's still, he's the visual so artist. So you definitely had to work. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. he still have his job, I may still, I my original plan to keep doing acting sure. and, and train my kids too, right? Right. He lost his job. I knew it would be hard for him to get a job. He's very specific. Uh-huh. Uh, so then it's easy for me to get a teaching job. Right, so I right. got a job then. And then when he eventually got his job back and he said, Lee, you know, I know that the happiest thing for you is to, to act. I said, yes, I know. But now I have two children. I cannot feel comfortable if you lose your job again. <laughs> right, right. You know, now I, I have two children. I'm a mom and dad. Exactly. So and then 10 years Focusing teaching mm. English and uh, raising my two boys. Then my school, my I teaching in adult school, and they closed on year twenty ten. Because oh, okay. I was going to just keep teaching until when I retire and I go back to acting. You, you, you the act act, act would yeah. yeah good money, good benefit. You sure, know why not? Sure, I have sure, two sure, children. Sure, I have my sure. parents. You know. And then the school closed because the financial situation of California. And then my husband said, go back. Here's your chance. So I came back to acting. So this is one of the things. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. when I come back, I am a mother. I'm so much more grounded. Right. I don't have any, you know, thing. I just you don't came. care about Hollywood parties. Yes, yeah, no more. Come back, started to do student film. They need a Chinese mom. All these uh-huh. students from China, from yeah. Hong Kong, from right, Taiwan, right. who can speak right. correct Mandarin. That's what I got to do. We needed. We needed. So, we, needed, we, needed a, we needed a real. I, we needed a yeah. native Mandarin speaker. So yeah. I started with the doing student Here film for no pay. Right. And for five years, I think I did forty productions. Wow! Wow! A lot of a lot of footage. Lots of footage. Yeah, your reel was just Lots of Then I did some, you know, the independent films Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, commercials. Not not major commercials, more focus on theatrical. So I think I paid my dues in a sense. My one most important thing is because I have a family, Mm -hmm. I wasn't like, I must... Uh, become famous, become, I still, it's the love of acting. Right. But right. I have my husband support, my, my parent, my mom turned her head is when I did my only Chinese speaking play in America. Yeah. I did one of the only Chinese speaking plays in America was this Taiwanese uh, playwright who wrote a play about this woman's life, 14, 30, 70 years old, 100 years oh. old. First. I got to play the 70 years old and 100 years old. Wow. So I brought my mom to watch the show. After she watched the show, she said, you can be an actor now. <laughs> thank you. Year 2009. I am, I am one, so thank you. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. that was... No, I, the, I, I get that. I get that. Yeah. So, so that I think the the you must have a, a strong support because there's yeah. just so much rejection. It's a it's brutal like, business. Yeah. Whether you're in yeah. front of the camera, behind the camera, yes. near the camera, it's, yes, it, no, no, no few parts of it are yes. easy. So yeah, even that you know you go to audition, you come out, you you're like you know why didn't I do that? Why didn't they pick me? Uh, and also not many roles for Asians. Sure. That I came back and I went to my agent. I said my agent said uh, I said why did I get that? Because look, I'm be perfect. He said, well, you missed 10 years. Because when I go back mm. to audition again, same woman who's 10 years ago didn't make it, is still there auditioning. Oh. So they said, we haven't seen you. I said, oh, I went off to have a family. Yeah. No regret. Yeah. No yeah. regret. I did what, you know, my Absolutely. best two productions, my two boys. There and you go. So, but I come back with a more stronger background, more... Um, fuller as a person right. so then when I go to audition it just uh, I'm there and yeah. uh, of yeah. course being actor you want you know like like the the biggest uh, one for me all these years was the Hawaii Five Well yeah yeah we'll talk uh, talk about that let's yeah. let's let's talk about listen it's time to brag a little bit Lee we got you warmed up now t- <laughs> now tell tell everybody what what yeah tell us some of your highlights yeah. the that and the show that you're doing yeah with, so yeah with, no. 
I came back year 2010, um, so within one year, I got my first co-star role at the Southland. Even my agent was surprised. On Southland? Yeah, that was my first co-star role, like one line, you know, that sure, some sure, people sure. for years, but, and, and even he and his wife were surprised, whoa, you know, uh, of course they're happy, you know. Yeah, so the yeah. second year, now I got to cast for NCIS Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, to opposite LL Cool J. Oh, awesome. <laughs> so that was like... How is that? It I, was really good. I he's heard he's very, pretty awesome. Yeah, he's very nice. And for that one, I auditioned for Vietnamese lady. You have to speak Vietnamese. Wow. So I got my son's uh, mom, friend's mom to teach me that two lines of Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. Of course, then when I went to audition, now I saw the people who played my mom, you know, uh -huh. you know, there, yeah, I had a, yeah. you know, so um, she even said, why are you here? I said, well, <laughs> it was supposed to be a 70 years old cemetery. The okay. role is a 70 okay. years old cemetery, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, they sent me here up there. So I went in there, I did my line and then left with the casting director. Yeah. I got a call back. That's great. So came back for the call back. Walk in that little room, the, the you know, auditioning in the little room still scares me, even yeah. now. I, I just, I froze. And, and people would be amazed. Sometimes it's like the size of a broom closet. Yeah. And like, wait, I've got to act yeah. and feel unencumbered in this six, <laughs> closet. Six, seven people there with a casting director yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. I walked in, I'm like, you oh barely, my gosh. barely enough air for you to breathe yeah. in a room like that. So, so, so they looked at me, I did my line. And so the casting director asked me, I said, Lee, do you know who you are talking to? I said, no, I didn't do any research. I didn't know what show it is. Okay. Anyway, I said, no. And, and he's, he's sitting there where I said, he said, well, you're talking to a very tall guy. I said, oh. uh, they, then they said, can you do it again? Then there was a writer right there. Yeah. And he said, he said something too. I forgot what he said. But anyway, I, at this time, I forgot my Vietnamese. Oh, Remember, I had to yeah. memorize. To, at this time, I forgot my Vietnamese. Because you're I, giving you all these notes yeah, in your life. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I looked up. I just gibberished. <laughs> the whole group burst and laughed. What'd you say? I, I have no clue. I just, because I forgot my sure, feeling sure. these lines. I but just, you acted in a, I just, a funny like a, way. Yeah. Right? I don't look up because he yeah. said this person. Yeah. I, I, I just, okay. So they all laughed. <laughs> and I, so I, I said, thank you very much. I laughed. Yeah. On the way I'm home. running to your car. On the way home, my agent called. They said, you're on a veil. Nice. Which which basically means again not not you got it unless yeah. the, unless the sun explodes yeah. or something you basically you so then they probably booked, got it. yeah they yeah. booked me and uh, gave me one week to they gave me the real Vietnamese yeah, line so for really one week I just studied and studied mm -hmm. and I did a pretty good job I think that's awesome that was uh, one of the the stories that just uh, because uh, I had no clue <laughs> what was I doing and didn't. Now when I get a show, I do yeah, do see, research. Yeah, yeah. Who's, who uh, was the guy? Someone you remember, or was it not one of the leads? The the tall guy was it one of yeah, the show? Yeah, Ella Cool J. It was Ella Cool J. Yeah, okay, I was okay. supposed to talk to him. I actually oh. met there with him. I actually oh, you, get oh, you, very you're, close. You're fitting him for a yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So I actually got a very close. Uh, you know, yeah, you're like fitting in yeah, for clothes yeah. in the same night. Nice. Yeah, so it's Ella Cool Cool J. That's great. That's awesome. And what else? Uh, what's the show that you're currently on? On uh, that's it's on Freeform. Yeah, that's that, a good that trouble. Our friend Kara Wong is on. It's a good yeah. trouble. Yeah, good and, trouble. And what's what's your character? Who's your character? I play on one of the lead girl's mom. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the big break for me was the time when I um, was cast to do Veep. Talk about that a bit. Yeah. Yes. The. The VIP is, uh, um, my manager sent me to go to the audition. So the, the day before the audition, I got this 12 pages script. Yeah. Uh, I'm supposed to audition. 12 pages for you. 12, 12 pages for me Your to side, go to the audition. Pages. Yeah. Okay. yeah. For the, for the uh, Chinese chem, chairman's translator. Right, right, right. So, yeah, that was, a, that was a big arc for you yeah, not to get into the story yeah, here. Yeah, so I got to... Um, 
I have my husband help me with the English part, Chinese part, no problem.、Mm. I think one of the thing is because the translator itself is not like you're playing a character. It's a character,、exactly. but it's a straightforward. Yes, you're supposed you're, to be. You're yes, supposed to be just you, invisible, just, but you gotta be there. Yeah. yeah. Not、that、like I、sense. have to play, you know, cemeteries, or I have to play、right. the the angry mom, or、right. so. Anyway, so I just, I just did the whole thing as who I am. Yeah. I went to audition. I, you know, did my lines、uh, straightforward there, and then they have me did a couple of times, give me some, you know, directions, <clears throat> and、uh, I went home in the afternoon. I booked the job. Wow. And then I did four episode of it.、Uh, so. That was one of the major big thing. I I would、yeah. say I got yeah, worked yeah. with all these veterans,、mm-hmm. you know, and、uh, learned a lot. Still scared. <laughs> 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 Even this last, you know, I back for the last season. Uh huh. Uh huh. Still, I'm just in awe with the、yeah. you know, with the people there. Still feel just.、Uh, of course, I have a long way to go, but just being there, you know, I, I feel proud of myself. Well, you sh- you you should. From my point of view, you've done so much. Is there anything? What do you wish you were better at? And of course, that question. Well, if you really want to, you know, if you, you'd be working on it, like I want to improve my Chinese, for instance. Is there something that you really wish you were better at, or that was more natural to you? Something you have to do a lot that still feels like like a like work, basically, that you need to do a lot. Definitely, I mean, just for the acting part, I think,、uh, I feel like、uh, um, because I have a whole family that my husband lost his job. There's a lot of pressure on me.、Uh, I have, I just、uh, plan that、uh, if I have a little bit more chance, I will go to take more classes mm, mm. and、uh, maybe try stand up. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet you'd be really good at stand up. Yeah, and、uh, going to two. Take some more comedy classes. I think、uh, um, you never stop learning. You know that's why I still go back to do、um, non-paying jobs.、Uh-huh. It's a really good role.、Mm-hmm. I still go ahead to do that because just to keep my craft going. Right. And to me, still my family is still most important. I spent I, since my mom passed away. I still go to visit my dad every day,、mm-hmm. and my, of my children, my two children. I still have two teenagers, but in terms of myself development. Totally, I I would like to uh, uh, improve myself more, and my goal is eventually to be one of the regulars in one of the shows in the future. Well, I think that's probably going to happen for you. Who or what?、Uh, second to last question: Who or what do you most credit, besides yourself, of course,、uh, for your success? Is there any one person? Or a a thing, a situation that you really think you know that made all the difference. Is there anything that's like, there's probably a thousand things、yeah. you could say, but like, what comes to your mind? With all the all the people who helped me on the way, I、yeah. think that for this the, the last five years, six year, six years, I could do so many, so much, and get to this point, it would be my husband. Awesome. But he hasn't really heard me telling him yet. <laughs> but I,、oh. everybody else, I would I. Yeah, he's there, you know. Although because he lost his his job, our family, you know, financial situation is really, you know, because he used to. Because that happened again, so it yeah, happened previously, and now、yeah. it's happened again. Okay. Uh, he uh, he used to work for Disney uh online. He's a、oh. uh, concept artist. Oh, fantastic! But、uh, you know that that world is changing. Yeah, but how? Yeah, however,、everything. he's there. For these six years, that、uh, whenever, like next week, I'll be away for how all whole week. I have a、uh, uh, two two productions. Then these five days, he has to take care of my two children, everything. Okay. So I would say, I mean, of、yeah. course, my teachers, my、sure. you know, all everybody like you, you know, bring me、oh, back to the short、nice. film. But the person who mostly support is is my husband. That's amazing. Does does he go? Does he visit your dad as well? Or yes, yes. My, But they don't. He doesn't they, speak. They don't、Chinese. speak the language very well. He still doesn't speak Chinese. You got to. He sounds like a great guy, but he's got to get on that. I try to get him to come to this show does, tonight. Does does he does he like Chinese food? 
Oh, yeah. Love yeah. Chinese food. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to invite myself because that would be rude. But uh, when I'm back in L.A., I, think, <laughs> I, I know so many people over there in your in your general neighborhood that I uh, you gotta, would love yeah. to. I need to. I love. Yes. I used to love. When I lived here full time, I used to go out there with my uh, a filmmaker friend, Elaine Shaw. We used to go. Whenever we would meet about something, mm-hmm. we developed a few things. She would she would usually pick me up in Hollywood and say, Okay, where do you want to go? Do you want to get hot pot? Do you want to get like hot pot and dim sum? We would just we would just be we would we'd be heading east. We'd be yes. talking about which restaurant we're going to on the way. Um, last question. Is there what's the best question that I didn't ask you? What should I have asked you? Or what uh <laughs> <laughs> this, or maybe not that. Is there is there anything I should have asked you that I, think I didn't I, occur to ask you that 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 we should know? I think we covered most of the. I, we covered almost my whole life. Wow! <laughs> yes. Wow! Well, yeah. Lee, it's been really great to get to know you, and I'm excited yeah. to screen this film for you tonight. Yes, actually, yeah. do have one thing I want to Please. say in terms of. Uh, um, Professional development in America and in China. If in China, I wouldn't think I would uh, have the opportunity with chances here. In America, I have no background, mm. 没有后门, mm. 没有关系, what no what? background, what? no relationship. Really. The family and the relationships, yeah. All by myself, yeah. in a sense. I have all the support. However, when I go to that audition room, I don't have any relation. Yeah. So the yeah. so for me to get to now doing recurring guest star, that's the, the big thing. I want that's to say huge. that yeah. uh, I wouldn't think I would have this kind of opportunity in China. I think you're probably right, given the different industries. Yeah. And I'm so excited for you that you do. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. It's a pleasure yeah. to talk to you. All right, that's the show this week for If I Knew You Better, and I hope you enjoyed the bonus episode. If you're listening on Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom, don't forget to visit crazyinagoodway.com to learn more about these shows, how China works, that I do with Inging Lee, or anything else. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next week. Music